Michael Peterson and the staircase is a controversial topic for one reason. Many people doubt his innocence. So let's take a look at his behavior during an interview given shortly after being convicted of murdering his wife. Welcome back, my body language buddies. My name is Jesus Enrique Rosas. I'm the body language guy. And it would be great if you join us by just liking this video, subscribing, and hitting that bell. Let's get down to it. In the early morning of December 9, 2001, police responded to a distress call in Durham, North Carolina. They found the body of Kathleen Peterson on the foot of the back staircase. She had bled out. Despite the claims that she must have accidentally fallen, Kathleen's husband, the novelist Michael Peterson, was soon arrested and charged with her murder. Two years later, Peterson was found guilty after over 13 weeks on trial, sentenced to life in prison without parole. However, Peterson and his court-appointed lawyer, Thomas Mayer, filed an appeal in 2006, but Peterson's requests for a new trial were repeatedly denied over the next few years. Yet he managed to arrange a retrial in 2011, following the determination of Duane Deaver, the blood spatter analyst who had been one of the principal witnesses in his case and who was fired after news came out that he had lied about his qualifications and misrepresented evidence in a number of cases, including Catholic death. Finally, in 2017, Peterson submitted a plea which allowed him to publicly maintain his innocence while still acknowledging that prosecutors had enough evidence to convict. He was eventually sentenced to 86 months of time already served in prison, so he was released. This case is complex enough, and there are hours of footage and evidence. Just to give an idea, one documentary released in 2004 had more than 600 hours of footage from Peterson's legal and personal records. In this episode, I'm going to focus on the interview given shortly after the original verdict, when he was already in jail. As I already mentioned, the fact that Peterson is currently a free man that could uphold his innocence still raises doubts about the circumstances of his wife's death. Namely, there are too many loose ends, such as his ongoing affair when this happened or the kind of bruises on her head. Now, let's begin with his answer to how he feels now that he's in jail and his assessment of the situation. Both his body language and his words are going to be critical here. Uh, happiness is up here. Uh, sadness is up here, so heaven's up here, hell's up here, so I'm not going to make this place here hell. It's going to be as, I don't think I can make heaven out of it, but I'm going to make it as, as good as I possibly can, because I don't want to, to suffer any more than I already have. There are a few body language clues easy to pick up to establish a baseline. He's not eye contact shy because he keeps his head in a neutral position and looking at the interviewer. His shoulders are relaxed and he uses illustrative hand gestures to add emphasis to his words. And there's the first problem people have with Michael Peterson. These kind of cases are interesting because you entertain both possibilities in your mind. Either he's innocent or he's guilty. And what you try is to imagine each situation and define which one makes sense with his words, his gestures, his voice, and if there are any contradictions. This is something that we do automatically, like when you try to guess the story of the couple having lunch in a nervy table at the fourth court. And in fact, our intuition is pretty good at picking up fast clues. Clues. The problem is when our rationalization begins to kick in. And in the case of Peterson, we can't avoid when imagine that, for example, if I was innocent and I was in his situation, I would never react like he's doing. And you're right, because every one of us have different ways of reacting to extreme situations. But you can make the judgment mistake of thinking that since you will react differently, then there's something shady with him. And that's okay, that's something we can't avoid because we're hardwired to that kind of emotional reactions. What we can do is realize that we are looking at an unique person, that they have different ways to react to events, and focus not in the comparison to us, which is inevitable, but in their own contradictions. If we watch the next clip, we can make it clearer. He's gonna answer the question, what's your most painful feeling right now? This is the first moment that he refers to Kathleen, his dead wife. Make sure you pay attention to his choice of words. The only pain, the only painful thing is, is separation from those you love. Losing a house, 
losing money. Uh, it's nothing. I mean, that's, you know, I, I used to write about that in all my books. The only thing I miss are first off Kathleen, but that's gone, and that's totally gone. And I miss my children, which they're not gone, but in a, a sense they are. This is a way you can compare and have an idea of what the person truly loves or likes or values. The patterns of the speech they use as reference. In this case, we got two patterns. He talks about my children, which is the most common way to refer to one's children. But then why does he refer to Kathleen with the words, that's gone, that's totally gone? Tell me if it doesn't feel strange that he doesn't say, she's gone, she's totally gone. Now, you might have the argument that he's referring to his relationship or his life with Kathleen. But that's an abstract, general concept. When you miss someone, okay, you can miss the moments, the relationship, the connection you had, the life together, but the strongest feeling is connected to the person. It's not hard to imagine that you will use the words, he or she is gone. As usual, I encourage you to put yourself in this situation and use the same words. That's gone. That's totally gone. And make sure to discern the feeling you get from it. I would like to read your opinion in the comments. Again, everyone reacts differently. Everyone's body language display is going to be unique and everyone's emotional signals are going to be like their fingerprints. So the only real reference we can have in this case is the person. That's why it's important to establish a body language baseline. What is their usual way of expression? But there is another thing he said in the previous clip. Losing a house, losing money, uh, it's, it's nothing. I mean, that's, you know, I, I used to write about that in, in all my books. He makes a reference to his books and that he has read them more than a few times that losing money or your house doesn't really matter. But he could have just said, I used to write about it. And in fact, in the original clip before mentioning Kathleen, he talks even more about his own writing. I wrote about that. that yes, art's lovely, uh, possessions are nice. But 15 years ago, I was writing, and they're cold, they're, uh, they're lifeless, uh, they're nothing like touch, warmth. There is a very good reason why he emphasizes so much that 15 years ago, he was already writing about possessions not meaning anything. And it's because one of the red flags of this case is that at the time of Kathleen's death, she had a 1.4 million life insurance policy and he was more than $140,000 in credit card debt. Yeah, enough to raise eyebrows. Now, to understand why so many people don't believe in Michael Peterson's innocence and what has to do with his body language, we should check out the following clip. You know, so clear in my mind that no, I if you didn't do anything, you're not going to be punished. That's not the way the system works. That doesn't happen. So I had this great faith in the system that, uh, you know, I'm going to be proved innocent. Uh, that everything that the, the district attorney says is, is, is you know, not true. Uh, of course that's going to happen because that, the truth is I didn't hurt Kathleen. The issue is that most of the time he is calm and collected, maybe too calm and collected, and his emotional displays are few and far between. The dissonance is when we compare this state to any of the two options I stated at the beginning, whether he is innocent or guilty. If he was guilty, then that detached attitude, that calmness only confirms how cold-blooded or cynical he is about everything. So in that hypothetical option of being guilty, his body language would make people despise him even more. If he was innocent, then people could not imagine how someone who's innocent will react like this after being sent to prison for life. And that's a bias we need to overcome because we don't know how he has reacted in private until reaching this level of acceptance. So for both options, the outcome in anyone's perception is that they there's something weird, shady in there. And of course, any feeling of shady will point to being guilty in some way. 
It's normal to fall for this line of reasoning precisely because it's based in our own emotions. And our emotions never wait, they just pop out of the blue so we can react instinctively to situations. But these circumstances are special and not as clear cut as we might see at first sight. So we need to go beyond our first emotional reaction and assess any true contradictions. In regards to emotional displays, there's another moment of this interview. My son Clayton had uh sent me a letter and he sent me a copy of a uh, job he just got. Uh, he's finishing at Johns Hopkins and he was so happy and he's so proud and he sent it to me and I realized, oh my God, you have to be there for that. Why is he doing it? Why do we, we want to show others the ones we love. And so he was, uh, <laughs> making me this offer of look at that. Uh, I've, uh, I've succeeded. I'm, I've done something wonderful. And he doesn't need to do that. His emotional signals here are consistent with someone that feels through sadness. And it's important to detect that when he says his son sent his success letter to him, he shows being proud. He sits upright, he raises his chin, and then realizes and remembers that he must have been there with his son. As I mentioned, this case has a ton of material, so if you want me to keep reviewing more videos about it, just let me know in the comments. If you want to refine your observation skills, all you have to do is download my 100 battle language tips right in the description of this video. My name is Jesus Enrique Rosas and it will always be a pleasure, my battle language buddies. Much love and bliss.